direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. We've got it. Waging war on corruption. All right, you are go. It's Alex Jones coming to you live from the front lines right, of the info war. It is Sunday, January 8th, 2012. We're going to be live here for the next two hours. I, of course, will be back tomorrow live on the radio, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central, 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern. I cannot believe that the official statements that war with Iran is a foregone conclusion and basically imminent is not a bigger news item here in the United States. I guess we've been hearing about war for so long that you just begin to expect it. Kind of like you grow up your whole life hearing about how you die someday and you watch grandparents die, you watch friends die, you, you watch neighbors die, you watch teachers die, you watch friends die, you watch a spouse die, you watch children die, and when it's time to die, you're like, well, this is just what happens. But this whole Iran situation is supposed to be the primer for the global crisis to really bring us into an official world government. It's unofficially been there, this corporate, global, anti-free market, anti-family tyranny for a very, very long time. But now it's staring us right in the eyeballs. And it's not even mincing words. And you see the entire Bill of Rights and Constitution being shoved into a meat grinder or like a stick of celery. The last thing to go in is the First Amendment. And they're now selling the idea that, yeah, we're going to start shutting off talk radio and People that question government, that means conspiracy theorists. All of this is going on. All of this is happening, and it's mind-blowing. Now, I did watch the Republican ABC New Hampshire debate. We got that uh, big primary coming up on Tuesday. Uh, Ron Paul is just turbocharging uh, into second place everywhere. And I've got even the corporate horror media admitting that. Uh, we've got the demonization tactics against him. I've got some advice to the Paul campaign. Uh, but watching the debate last night, I know why so many people still get suckered. Because it is off who sounds the nicest, who sounds the best, who sounds the most reasonable. These are paid liars. All of them but Ron Paul. I'm not saying Mitt Romney's an evil person. I'm not saying Huntsman's an evil person. I am saying Newt Gingrich is evil. He's a globalist and a liar like I've never seen. But still, they're bought and paid for by the interest that control the Democrats, just like Obama. I said, I don't think he's probably an evil person, but he's certainly a sellout, bought and sold hundreds of times to get to where he is. And I knew what Obama would do from his advisors. I made the Obama deception that's even more popular three and a half years after he got into office than when I first made it. And the day he was elected, November 2008, and was seated January 22nd, 2009. I mean, I had that film almost done at his inauguration. That was I did, I did the intro. I'd already done the rest of the film when he got inaugurated, so I had that intro shot. And I laid out everything he'd do. He's going to invade Libya. They're going to attack this country. They're going to invade Af Africa through AFRICOM. They're going <laughs> to call it peace. Uh, that's why he's being given the peace prize. Uh, they're going to pass the carbon taxes, all of it. And I keep going back to the Obama deception because it's the best work we've got. I can point at something over three years old and say that's the best piece of material out there to expose the whole left right paradigm, the entire agenda. And obviously, I've got a bunch of high-tech, globalist, uh, matrix-type news to go over. And then Jesse Ventura is going to be joining us. I, I taped the interview because it was going to be audio Skype from uh, basically the desert coast of Baja. But by the grace of God, it was good audio. So I wanted to tape it in case there were problems. We could edit out any problems, but it was all, it's going to be unedited. It was a 35-minute interview. And people were like, well, why do you care so much if Jesse Ventura is being destroyed in the media? Because it's a PSYOP. And it signals 
They're going after anti-war activists right now. Andy's my friend. And yes, it's all a big lie. That's coming up. Stay with us. We'll break it down. Well, this is going to be a doozy of a Sunday special report. We are live, ladies and gentlemen, blasting out across the planet on the AM and FM dial. Number one when it comes to podcasts and audio streams on the Internet. Number one radio show, according to Shoutcast and many other metrics, Infowars.com. And, of course, the weekday show, 11 to 2 Central, uh, during the day, is also carried by XM. We've got to work on them picking up the Sunday uh, show. I know they pick it up live during the day and re-air it at night. That, in fact, that's an idea next week. We need to talk to the XM folks and get me on, uh, get the show on Sunday. Okay, uh, very important transmission lined up for you today. We obviously had a, a clip show uh, with it being the beginning of the uh, year last Sunday, but we are here. And I want to thank those of you out there for joining us. I know there's important things going on like NFL football, but because our world is being purposefully imploded into a global depression so that a handful of derivative creating fraudster mega banks can take over the planet via crony capitalism, the opposite of free market. A lot of you do realize that this information is absolutely vital. Uh, let me say this out of the gates. We have Jesse Ventura joining us from his home in Baja, California. He's never done an interview from Mexico. He goes down there a few months off and on during the year to get out of the Minnesota winters. Uh, he joined us via audio Skype. It's very good audio. I interviewed him before. We went live today in case there were any problems. Why is Jesse Ventura our top story? Uh, not the collision course for war with Iran. Iran decides to close the Strait of Hormuz if oil exports blocked. And they're now getting ready to cut off Iran's oil. That's happening in the EU right now. American, British, Israeli, and Iranian warships sailing towards confrontation. IAEA prepared to react to any oil spill disruption. No steps planned now. Financial Times of London, Iran, Israel, U.S. planned Gulf exercises. Iran said, of course, last Wednesday in their official government publications that if any U.S. ships or Israeli or, or NATO enter the Strait of Hormuz, it will be their last warning which is a threat for military attack. Uh, not uh, the best for Iran to be, go I guess they realize it's a foregone conclusion, they're going to be attacked. Uh, Israel vows to treat hackers like other terrorists. That's already happening here in the U.S. Uh, it is all coming up. And uh, the reason the Ventura thing is going to be our top story, I'll get into the Iran more in the second hour today, is because if we don't stand with somebody when they're under a artificial manufactured character assassination, like Ron Paul, myself, Jesse Ventura, or others, we're going to hang separate, as, as founding father Benjamin Franklin said. We either hang together or hang separate, meaning from the end of a rope. Uh, and people are like, what are you talking about? And I'll get into some of the news before we get into this, uh, when, when, when Jesse's son joins us first, filmmaker, director, TV host, uh, Tyrell Ventura, a great political mind in his own right. Uh, and then I'm going to air the interview with Jesse that I just did a few hours ago, about an hour and a half ago. And towards the end, there's parts of it I'm, at the end I'm, I'm not even going to air because it, it sounded like Jesse was just beside himself. Uh, I've never heard him like this. It, it, they're attempting to destroy Jesse Ventura because he is a loose cannon. And by loose cannon, wild card, he really says what he believes. He's a real guy. I've known him for a long, about six, seven years now. He's a real guy. And MSNBC later admitted that they had hired him and paid him $9.5 million so that they could basically not let him be anti-war during the Gulf War and, and, and hold him via contractually that he couldn't do any media interviews for three years. So from 2003 to 2006, you never heard him speak out because the system saw him as a major contender then and they've done the focus groups they know that anybody seen as anti-establishment is popular right now that's why ron paul is so popular and number two or number one in all the major polls now even though he's older even though uh, uh he's scholarly but doesn't have a lot of thunder and lightning in him he's very popular and the system's trying to destroy him there's an ad track but back to Huntsman operators, and this is all at Infowars.com, that came out Thursday that Fox News, CNN, and others ran, making fun of Asian people and implying it was a Ron Paul ad. 
And uh, the media knows this and won't retract the fact that they blamed it on Ron Paul. They've hired people to dress up in hayseed outfits to say racist things to blame it on Rand Paul. There is no level of dirty trick that they won't engage in. And so it's not just about Jesse Ventura. It's about how they can destroy people. And, and I've experienced this. I was protesting Obama and covering it at the DNC 2008. And Michelle Malkin was there, and she'd accused me of lying about the Marines throwing a puppy off a cliff. And she said it was a robot puppy and was probably staged. And, of course, the Marines had already admitted it was a real event. And I walked up to her, and I said, how dare you say I was a liar? That's admitted to be a real puppy. Now, admit you, you, admit you were wrong. And, and the people that were with her started getting in my face and bumping into me. So I shoved one of them back, and, you know, they almost fell over. I couldn't believe it. Two of them almost fell over, barely shoved them. It was like they were dominoes or something. And then they brought in these other guys I later learned had left with them who stood behind me and were wearing masks and hats. It's all online, screaming, kill Michelle Malkin, kill Michelle Malkin. And within an hour of this happening, I had national TV calling me saying, why'd you say kill her? And Denver Post and Dallas Morning News. And I knew right then they'd move so fast it was a psyop. So I got back to the hotel, reviewed our footage and had them on tape screaming, kill Michelle Malkin. And I had the footage showing they left with her. So I got that up quickly, stayed up late, got it on YouTube. By the time I went on Coast to Coast AM, because they asked me on to, you know, answer for this, because, you know, they'd seen the national news and I'd say, kill her, you know, kill a, you know, defenseless woman. And I would say, and I was able to say, here is the video. And everybody watched it. It got, you know, half a million hits or whatever, views. People said, wow, they set him up. I forced retractions in newspapers across the country. I threatened to sue the Dallas Morning News. They would not retract. But they were so discredited, I said, fine, I'm like, I don't have time to sue you. Because obviously the tide turned and it, and it, and it backfired on them. Uh, we Are Change, an activist group that uh, you know I basically inspired and helped set up all across the country to fight the globalist. They were protesting Laura Bush. And uh, suddenly a, la a man jumped out of a dark alley by the Barnes & Noble, started ramming his daughter into the reporters with her in a wheelchair saying, don't attack my daughter. It was all in the news. 9-11 truthers attack girl in wheelchair. They went all the way to trial. The Secret Service got on stand. NYPD lied and said they attacked. The Secret Service would not lie and said, nope, that man with his daughter in a wheelchair came out of nowhere and rammed him. And we even had video of, uh, you know, of the guy screaming, don't do it. So, you know, please, why are you attacking me? But it didn't matter. The media, the New York Post, Rupert Murdoch ran with it. And so we've seen this over and over again. And they had to retract, though, in the New York Post when they were found not guilty in court. And the Secret Service agent did their duty and did not lie. NYPD absolutely disgraced themselves absolutely disgraced themselves uh and uh, so so they could do this anytime they could pull me over and claim i'm on pcp they could pull me over and uh do do anything and, and i've been threatened with all sorts of stuff they could beat me up in the parking lot that's happened before there is so just understand folks those of us that are right out at the tip of the spear are under attack and Jesse out of the blue said, I just want to say that me and my wife will never commit suicide either. He's going to have to drive back up in his RV from Baja, Mexico. And he, you know, off the record, you know, they're going to take, I'm not, they said, don't say we're going to do off the record. But then Jesse said it on air with me. We haven't aired it yet. Uh, he, you know, he said he's already got the wheels rolling. He's going after all of them. He has to. Because if you're a new listener or, or you didn't see, 10 times I know of or more on Fox News. They had this, quote, most deadly sniper on who's got a book out to say, it's, to say that he beat up Jesse Ventura and, because Jesse said he's glad troops are dying. And then, and of course, there's no witnesses, no nothing, and it just totally is incredible, meant to assassinate his character. So I hope Chris Kyle, this Navy SEAL guy, enjoys this because Ventura is 110% coming after you. And he beat Vince McMahon in lawsuits and many others. I mean, he's not litigious, you know, but I mean, you just better look out. So that's all coming up. And, and the, but they're wanting to assassinate his character.